This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Members of the Governor's Cabinet are coming to Tamaqua. Find out how you can get your questions answered next. Hi everyone, I'm Ken Karen. Let me take a moment to thank you for watching us in HD on Service Electric Cable Vision Channel 513 and an SD on Channel 13. Stream us on your TV with the free Samsung Productions app and Apple TV and Google Chromecast. And these are your Monday headlines from SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. It's an opportunity to talk with state government officials in your area. It's all part of the Cabinet in Your Community that takes place tomorrow afternoon in Tamaqua. Lisa Sugar explains. It is called Cabinet in Your Community and it is coming to Tamaqua on Tuesday, April 3rd. Here to tell us all about it is Cassandra Coleman. She is the director of the Northeast and Central Regional Office for the Office of the Governor. That's a big job in itself and she only covers 28 counties and she had the time to actually be here today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Tell us about this. Is this the first time something like this is done where town hall meetings are being held all across the state? So actually, um, Governor Casey did something similar called Capital for a Day. However, Cabinet in Your Community is the Governor Wolf's version of this. Um, so the governor in November launched this initiative where we give the opportunity for communities to have a one-on-one -on -one town hall-like style dialogue with the cabinet officials. We pick anywhere from four to six cabinet officials and bring them to communities across the Commonwealth. So what's been the reaction thus far? You've had about a dozen so far. Yes, yeah, so we've had a dozen. We have about another two dozen coming up again <laughs> statewide. Um, the community has been overwhelmingly wonderful about these. They've been coming out. Our average, we've had about 100 to 150 at each of these. Um, and the dialogues have been great. The questions have been wonderful. Now, are you hearing new questions at each event, or are you hearing a common theme? So we actually, every event is different because no makeup of the cabinet secretaries is the same. So we've been honestly getting a bunch of different topics and discussions. Well, that's great. So now this is taking place Tuesday, April 3rd at 1 p.m. at Lehigh Carbon Community College. That's on 234 High Street in Tamaqua. So tell us about who will be at this session. So this one specifically will be the Department of Community and Economic Development, mm. Pima, uh, the De Department of Environmental Protection, the Department of Human Services, and the Secretary of Education. Wow, that's a pretty good mix to have right there. And speaking of mix, what type of mix do you have in your audience? Because we were talking early and you said even students come from some area schools. Yes, and we encourage that. So um, actually we have stakeholders from all of the different agencies that usually participate, as well as everyone's welcome. Even if they don't have a specific issue with this, any of the agencies participating, we welcome everybody. Um, we encourage students or college students to participate. We've had over the last dozen, probably at least eight or nine of them where students students have participated. And if for some reason the questions that they have don't get answered at the event, we are happy to collect those questions afterward and actually get those questions answered from the agencies and then continue with the follow-up for them. That's a pretty good opportunity. You can't beat that. So now if someone would like to attend this event in Tamaqua, you would like them to RSVP? Yes, we would encourage RSVPs just because of limited seating. Um, so they can RSVP to myself, which is Coleman at pa.gov, or they can call 570-614-2090. Well, this is wonderful. Cabinet in your community, 1 p.m. Tuesday, April 3rd. Again, it's Lehigh Carbon Community College, 234 High Street in Tamaqua. We want a lot of people to come out. Thank you so much for taking the time. We hope you'll come back and talk more. Maybe there'll be more scheduled in the future in our area. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Cassandra Coleman from the Governor's Office. Thank you, Lisa. We'll see you again shortly. In other news, a West Hazleton man has been charged in connection with a Sunday morning shooting in that borough. 44-year-old Domingo Garcia Lopez is charged with two felony counts of aggravated assault and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The shooting happened early yesterday morning at 5 Washington Avenue in the borough. One male victim was airlifted to a regional trauma center for treatment of gunshot wounds. Lopez was arraigned and remanded to the Luzerne County Prison without bail. The investigation is is continuing and further charges are pending. Anyone with information is asked to call West Hazelton Police at 570-455-3733. 
In good news for residents of Carbon County, the Lehigh Valley Health Network has added a number of in-demand specialties to its Lehighton location. Starting today, the Lehigh Valley location at 363 North 1st Street in Lehighton will offer weekday um, appointments in cardiology, general surgery, neurosurgery, orthopedics, and vascular surgery. For more information, go to lvhn.org. Well, if you drive past Luzerne County Courthouse in Wilkesbury, you might be surprised to see the lawn decorated with pinwheels. As Lisa Sugar reports, this simple childhood toy is there for a very important reason. The month of April is Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. And here to tell us about a very special event that is upcoming later this week is Shannon Peduto. She is the Executive Director of Luzerne County Child Advocacy Center in Wilkesbury. It's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you for having me. Now, you have a wonderful event taking place this Friday, and it has to do with pinwheels. So tell us about this. Yes. Uh, April is actually Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. So for uh, the people in Luzerne County and the surrounding counties, we actually place 540 pinwheels on the Luzerne County Courthouse lawn to represent all of the children that had the courage to report being abused last year and the children who came to our center to receive services. Is that number growing each year? Yes. Unfortunately, every year we have an increase in the number. Uh, but the way we look at it is that is 540 children who we were able to help and able to put on a different path in life and to help them overcome the trauma that they've experienced. That's, that's wonderful. That is a positive way to look at it, definitely. And that, we hope, will be the case if someone sees this interview, that you know they'll realize that help is available, and maybe you could add them to the list of pinwheels that were given help as well. Now, you want the public to come out this Friday to the Luzerne County Courthouse, so tell, me, tell us when and exactly what will be happening. Sure. So this Friday, April 6th, we're going to be having the pinwheel dedication ceremony. It will take place at 11 a.m. at the Luzerne County Courthouse, which is on River Street in Wilkes-Barre. So now you're putting all of these pinwheels out there. What's been the response? Because you've done this before. It is a great visual for people. Uh, there's usually a lot of foot traffic that goes through the Luzerne County Courthouse. A lot of visitors, it's springtime, people are coming out more. Uh, so it's a great visual for people to actually see how many children are reporting being abused, either physically or sexually, just in Luzerne County. And other child advocacy centers in other counties will be doing the same thing to provide that visual. And when you walk through that garden of pinwheels, if you can place a child in every position that there is a pinwheel, it's an amazing visual to see, and it truly gets to your heart to see how many children are in need every year. How did the pinwheel come to represent this? Basically, a pinwheel is a child's toy, and it's something that is free, and it blows in the wind, and it represents what children are. Um, they just love life and have this great outlook on life and have a wonderful time going through life. And that is something that we want for every child. And unfortunately, not every child has that circumstance growing up in life, but we're trying to make sure that every child does have that opportunity as they do get older and become adults. Very good. Well, this special event again is taking place Friday, 11 a.m. at the Luzerne County Courthouse. You wanted to give a reminder, too, that you have a big gala coming up. You're going to be back to tell our viewers more about this, but you want them to save the date. Yes, please. Saturday, April 28th, we're going to be having our fourth annual gala. It will be held at Mohegan Sun Pocono, and the theme this year is a fabulous 50 sock hop. So please get on your uh, poodle skirt and your saddle shoes and come on out for a great event. And this all benefits the many programs that you have at the center. Correct. It allows us to never have to charge a family for any services that we provide when abuse is reported. That's excellent. The help is available and it is there for free. Please come out this Friday at 11 a.m. to the Luzerne County Courthouse. We will have Shannon back to talk with us more throughout the month of April. Thanks again, Lisa. Well, they're back in the hunting woods. Tune in tonight for the season premiere of Wild Bout Hunting. This is the start of season three, The Challenge. The show is produced and hosted by Dennis Gantz and features the hunting adventures of the Wild Bout Hunting team. SSP TV is proud to present the season three premiere tonight at 7.30 p.m. It will also air tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. with several rebroadcasts throughout the week. For more information, go to wildbouthunting.com. And a reminder from the Pennsylvania State Police, the application period for the 2018 Troop and Camp Cadet program is now closed. Applications for the 2019 program will begin in early January. 
It's an evening of networking, relaxation, shopping and self-indulgence for women in the Greater Hazleton area. This Wednesday marks the 12th annual Ladies' Night Out sponsored by the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. The expo will feature cash and carry, sampling of services, demonstrations, giveaways and coupons from more than three dozen participating businesses. Ladies' Night Out is this Wednesday from 5.30 p.m. until 8 p.m. at Edgewood Weddings and Golf, 22 Edgewood Lane in Drums. The cost is $12 for Chamber Chamber members, $15 for non-members. To RSVP, call the Chamber at 570-455-1509 or go to hazeltonchamber.org. Coming up, Ron Marchetti is talking women's hoops and has a Hollywood trivia question in his weekly trivia treat segment. And up next, we talk with representatives from the Hazelton Integration Project about their big national award. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. They were here in February actually asking for your vote. And guess what? You all came through. And we are pleased to announce, as we had told you earlier, that the Hazelton Integration Project, located in the Hazelton One Community Center, is now the recipient of a 2018 Atlantic Renewal Award. And that means a $20,000 grant for this wonderful organization in the community. Here to tell us and react to the great news is Ben Medina. He is the executive director of HIP and also Lily Fuentes, who is an AmeriCorps VISTA public relations intern with the organization. Ben, I'm going to start with you. What was your reaction? Ken, Karen, I said, we expected you guys to win. You do such a great job. But your reaction was? <laughs> uh, I was really, really excited and surprised that we won. You know, um, they were choosing among 3,000 companies, you know, so I didn't think we were going to do it because they're a bigger company with more year of experience. But we are really surprised and happy. So that was what was needed. You needed people to vote. But you had some really big supporters in the form of Joe Madden. And you said literally people from other countries as well. Yes, actually, we had a lot of people voting for us, not just in the United States, but we have friends uh, everywhere, uh, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, uh, South America. So, And of course, Joe has a lot of followers. And I know they voted for him because they, they follow him and they, and they believe in what he's doing here. So we're really, really happy for that. Well, we can't say congratulations enough. Lily, I'm sure you were thrilled as well. This, this was perfect because they were looking to uh, award a group that does something for the community or helps children. And that's basically what the Hazelton Integration Project is all about. Uh, yes, they were. Um, we were pretty lucky, to be honest. And how Mr. Medina said, the organizations that we were going against, they were pretty big. Uh, they were pretty solid and they were pretty competitive. So we are very thankful for your support and um, for the possible opportunities that this grant and this award is gonna open for us. Now you as an intern there, you see the great works that are being done there. So how will $20,000 help to make even more great programs there? Well, right now um, we're looking into completing a STEAM lab and uh, the difference with the STEM lab would be that it would add the art complement to it. And uh, we're looking into completing the lab. We're looking into adding an art studio for the, for the kids. And um, we're hoping to expand our athletic program and just the education aspect of itself. Wow, so this will really be a nice addition to the program that the, you do offer so many programs right now. So mm -hmm. this just helps you to expand and help even more people. Definitely, this is what we're going to do. We're going to continue providing services to the community, uh, helping out with children in Hazleton. Whatever we could do to uh, bring something to, for the community, we will do. Well, again, we can't say congratulations enough. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the many people out there, the people who think you're doing a great job and voted for you? I will uh, tell them to come over, take a look what we do in the Hazel 20 Integration Project, uh, volunteer for us because we always need people to help us. You know, We are going to have a few events, and I will invite everyone to come and join us because it's going to be good. That's very well said, and it is a great atmosphere there. Lily, because you're there and you're interning with them, how does it make you feel knowing you helped out so many children? Um, I feel pretty happy. I feel pretty excited. I feel pretty humble because uh, this is the first time I've had an experience like this, especially with a national war and the national recognition that we're getting. So uh, I was pretty excited. We were all pretty excited. 
as you should be. Again, great news, the Hazleton Integration Project winning a $20,000 grant, national recognition as one of the winners of the 2018 Atlantic Renewal Awards. Congratulations Thank from you. all of us. Keep up the good work. We will. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. What's up, Freeland, and what's up with the weather? If we don't laugh, we'll cry as snow made a comeback this morning, but um, temperatures, they heated up. Let's take a look at the extended forecast now from the National Weather Service. Tonight, expect some rain, mainly after 5 a.m., 60% chance of precipitation. We'll have a low of 34 degrees. On Tuesday, rain at a high near 47, 100% chance of precipitation. And then Tuesday night, we have a 40% chance of showers cloudy with a low of 43 degrees. Wednesday, showers are likely with a thunderstorm possible. 57 will be the high and it will be breezy 70% chance of precipitation. Wednesday night mostly cloudy and cold with a low of 25. Thursday the sun comes out but will only get up to the upper 30s. Thursday night partly cloudy low of 27 degrees. On Friday a 50% chance of snow showers then a chance of rain showers mostly cloudy with a high in the mid 40s. And then Friday night 30% chance of snow showers mostly cloudy low of 25 degrees. And it's time for our weekly feature, Law Tips, on SSP TV News. Here's today's segment from the Falvello Law Firm in Cunningham. My name is Attorney Alexis Falvello. I'm with the Falvello Law Firm in Cunningham, Pennsylvania. Oftentimes, we do get calls from potential clients asking us what the difference in separate power of attorneys would be. There are two separate kinds of power of attorneys that you can get. One is a financial power of attorney and that allows your attorney to handle financial matters on your behalf as if they were you. The other kind of power of attorney you can get is a healthcare power of attorney. And that power of attorney allows the individual that you name to make decisions for you with respect to any healthcare situations that may arise. Here at Favela Law Firm, when we draft healthcare power of attorneys, attached to it is what's called a healthcare directive. That healthcare directive provides three hypothetical situations in which your wishes then are set forth in the event that you're not able to answer questions with respect to your healthcare because of a medical condition that has arose for you. If you have any questions with respect to powers of attorney, please give us a call at Favela Law Firm. And now your green screen midday winning lottery numbers on SSP TV News. Pick two, seven, four, your pick three numbers, three, zero, three, pick four, one, four, two, zero, pick five, one, five, four, five, zero. The wild number is seven. Ron Marchetti is here and he's decked out in Notre Dame attire. Find out why when we come back. Notre Dame won the NCAA Women's Basketball National Championship last night. And I will talk about that game and tonight's game on Friday's Short Shot. But not tonight, because this is Trivia Treats. It's Easter Monday, everybody. Tonight, we start with not that hard of a trivia question. What was the first sports movie to win an Academy Award for Best Picture? I'm going to let you chew on that for a bit. Tonight is the night of the NCAA Men's National Championship game. It starts at 9.20 p.m., which is totally ridiculous. There is school tomorrow. Mother of God. It will be Villanova in Michigan. I'll give you my prediction at the end of the segment. But speaking of Michigan, 29 years ago tomorrow, in 1989, Michigan outlasted Seton Hall 80 to 79 in overtime in the national title game at the King Dome in Seattle. But just three days before the start of that 89 tournament, Wolverine coach Bill Frieder announced he would accept a head coaching position at Arizona State, but said he would coach Michigan through the end of the March Madness if necessary. Well, Michigan Athletic Director Bo Schembechler uh, replied, No way! You could leave now. You're fired! Schembechler replaced him with assistant coach Steve Fisher, an interim coach. Fisher then took the third seat of Wolverines all the way. And to win the national championship, he stayed on as coach of Michigan for the next eight seasons. Now the answer to the first sports movie 
to win an Academy Award for Best Pitcher, released in 1976. Rocky won Best Picture and was the highest grossing film of the year with a box office of about $225 million. Actress Sylvester Stallone, who was struggling, wrote the rags to riches story of boxer Rocky Balboa. United Artists liked Stallone's script and offered him $335,000, but envisioned a, a well-established star in the role of Rocky. Although nearly broke, Stallone refused to sell the screenplay unless he could play the part Rocky. The studio finally relented. Rocky made Stallone, who was 30 years old, an international star. The film spanned seven sequels. While playing Balboa in the 2013 film Creed, Stallone was nominated for an Academy Award in the Best Supporting Actor category. Now, let's get to my picks on Friday. I said Michigan would be Loyola and Kansas would be Villanova. One right and one wrong. So since only Michigan and Villanova are still standing, I'm picking Villanova tonight. Enjoy the game and the week. Hail Notre Dame, their first national title since 2001. Till Friday, be a good sport. And stay loose. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's Talk of the Town. The Women in Science Spring Symposium will be held on Tuesday, April 10th from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. at Genetti Ballrooms on Route 309 in Hazel Township. You must RSVP for this event by April 4th. For more information, you can call 570-450-6314. Eckley Miners Village will be having their Molly Maguire's fundraiser by showing the Molly Maguire movie screening at the historic Monk Chunk Opera House in Jim Thorpe on Thursday, April 19th. Tickets are $50 for a pre-film reception and premium seating, or $20 just to see the film. For more information, you can call 570-636-636. 2070. The Shenandoah Area Free Public Library will be sponsoring a bus trip to Mohegan Sun Casino on April 29th. The trip cost is $25, which will include $25 free slot play and a $5 food voucher. To reserve a spot, you can call one of the two numbers on your screen. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Arthur Edward Hines of Beaver Meadows. The Frank J. Bonham Funeral Home in Hazleton will announce their arrangements. Sharon A. Motel of West Hazleton. The Frank J. Bonham Funeral Home in Hazleton will announce their arrangements. And Evelyn W. Ogrodnik of McAdoo. The Damiano Funeral Home in McAdoo will announce their arrangements. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name now on SSP TV News, you can call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Today's winner is Irene Lozarski of Sugarloaf Township. Call now and leave a message at 570-455-7267 extension 104 for your free movie. I think Ron Marchetti should wear that Notre Dame hat all the time. Love that on him. Hey, Yankees home opener today canceled or postponed because of snow. Check out the cool picture of Yankee Stadium in the snow on Major League Baseball's Instagram account. Follow us on all social media as well for constant updates from SSP TV News. I'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy, everybody. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.